So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ben, and today my talk is about uh, TSDB compaction. So a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm an SRE at Bydance, uh, working on Kubernetes and observability. And I'm a tunnels maintainer and also a Prometheus contributor. Mm, so first of all, I want to give big thanks to Ganesh for his uh, great TSDB blog series. So if you are interested in TSDB and want to learn more about compaction, please uh, definitely check out his blog post. So in his uh, blog post, he defines the compaction as a process of creating one uh, new block from one or more source blocks. And this is actually a high level overview of TSDB compaction. And in this talk, uh, let's dive deep into it. So because the definition mentions a TSDB block, so I will first introduce what is a TSDB block. So a TSDB block is created from an in-memory head block to disk every two hours. And this way, there's no time overlapping by default. So different blocks will cover different time ranges. So you can think this uh, as a way to organize your time series data partitioned by time. So for example, when there's a query comes in, it will only touch uh, the blocks within the required time range. So if you query the most recent data, it will only hit the most recent block. So each TSB block is actually a minute database itself. It contains four parts, a JSON file to store some metadata, an index file for uh, helping you search series, and a trunks directory to store your data samples, and finally, a tombstone file. So let's start with the uh, metadata file first. So it includes some blo uh, block level metadata like the time range and some TSDB stats uh, like number of samples, series, and trunks, and some additional information about compaction. And in other systems like tunnels, we extend uh, the metadata file to include some information like the uh, external labels or downsampling uh, resolution of that block. So next, uh, let's look at uh, what is index and trunks. So we all know that in TSDB, the smallest unit is actually a sample, which just uh, a pair of uh, timestamp and value. So let's imagine if we map all these uh, data samples to a two-dimensional graph. For example, the x-axis is time and y-axis is series. Then the graph would look like this. And uh, you can find that uh, each row just uh, represents a series. And uh, a series includes two parts. On the right-hand side, we have some uh, label sets, which are just some combination of label pairs uh, used to uniquely identify one series. And uh, for simplicity, you can think uh, all these uh, series labels on the right-hand side can be stored on disk uh, in some special format. And this is called the index file, and it's used for looking up your series faster during the query time. And on the uh, left-hand side, there are some uh, data samples, and each row of samples actually belongs to each series. And to store these uh, samples on disk, they are encoded in some special format to save uh, disk space, and uh, this is called trunks. So when we uh, run a query, it will first try to match the series uh, from the index file, and for each uh, series, it will try to fetch the corresponding uh, trunks file on the right-hand side, and finally return the results to the user. So yeah, we covered the index and the trunks, and uh, I want to skip the tombstone file for now, and let's talk about compaction first. So in this diagram, we prepare two, uh, compact, uh, two blocks to compact together. Block A and B are created from the head block, so they don't have any uh, overlapping data by default. And as you can see, uh, they have some common series, like uh, job equals HTTP server. And also in the meantime, they will have some different series, like this uh, series from Kubernetes environment because we all know that Kubernetes environment is very uh, dynamic, so the pods might be uh, created and deleted at different times. So it's very possible that uh, some series will exist in block A, but not in block B. So 
uh, after this setup, let's start the compaction. So uh, I think the first thing in the compaction uh, phase is to merge the several index files together into a larger index file. So you can see we have two index files from A and B, and uh, we merged, merged them into a larger one. So during this process, the common series labels, such as the uh, labels from HTTP server and uh, node exporters, they are merged and uh, they duplicate because we don't want to, to keep two copies of them. And for the different series, like the Kubernetes metrics, they are just sorted and combined together. So after the index merging is done, next uh, we want to merge the trunks together. So let's switch to the two-dimensional graph again. So what we want to do is to first iterate over all the series from the newly created index file on the right-hand side. And for each uh, series on the right-hand side, we will try to fetch the trunks from different blocks and uh, merge the trunks together. So uh, this process would look like this. So because the two blocks don't have any overlapping data, we just need to combine these trunks together ho horizontally. And uh, yeah, you can see for these uh, different series that only exist in uh, block A, because B don't have this kind of data, so we don't need to merge anything. And yeah, finally, the results would look like this. So we have got a larger, newly compacted block, and uh, the index and trunks are merged together. So this is how the compaction works. And, but this is the most common case because there's no data overlapping. And another case is called uh, vertical compaction. And uh, yeah, you can see block A has, and block B have some overlapping data. And this case happens a lot when uh, Prometheus supports backfilling. However, the compaction phase is actually still the same. What we need to do is still uh, merging the index file together. And then we are going over all these series on the right hand side and try to merge the trunks together. So the only thing different is that we might got some overlapping in this case, right? And finally, we will get a newly compacted block like this. And the only like, overlap trunks uh, is outlined here. And uh, for this overlap data, we need to rebuild the overlap trunks and maybe do some deduplication. But this process is actually very naive in Prometheus right now because uh, the, du the duplication is only one-on-one, -on -one, which means only uh, exactly the same trunks can be deduplicated. So, yeah, I think that covers uh, all the process of compaction. And next, let's take a look uh, at why we do we need it. So, yeah, let's think about the query scenario. So, uh, before compaction, uh, if we do a long-term query, it will try to match all these uh, small blocks and hit them. So that in this way, we need to go through all these small index files and try to merge the results together back to the user. But if we can do some kind of compaction, then finally we will only have one uh, larger block in this case. So the same query will only hit one larger block and we don't have to do anything related to like mer merging results or some online deduplication in this case. So query performance will be significantly uh, improved. And additionally, because each index files uh, from the small blocks might contain some common series, as I mentioned earlier. So when we do the compaction and the uh, merging process, we can save some disk space by deduplicating the index data. Okay, so yeah, finally, let's take a look at the tombstone file. So why do we need it? So let's imagine the case if we want to delete some serious data from a block, then we can send a deletion request and specify like the serious matches and the data time range we want to delete. And for performance reasons, this data to delete are temporarily saved in a file called tombstone. And uh, it's, uh, these data are deleted during the compaction time. So while we uh, iterate over all these series, and we find that if the series and trunks actually match the data from the tombstone, and if it matches, then we drop this, and uh, so that the newly uh, compacted block will not have this data. So 
And uh, additionally, if the Thompson file contains enough amount of serious data, the compaction itself will be triggered to clean up the data in order to save uh, more disk space. So now I think you uh, have a high level idea about what is a Thompson file, but in the uh, perspective of compaction, it's still just some kind of modification to your index and trunks data. So yeah, to me, I think the essential part of uh, compaction is merging the index and trunks. So yeah, I think we cover the compaction, but actually before the compaction phase, there's another phase called planning, and it's used to choose uh, which blocks we want to compact together. So in this diagram, there are five blocks in the uh, TSDB directory now, and the planner chooses to uh, compact the three blocks together into a new, new block F. So to choose these source blocks, it fo follows some uh, planning algorithm. And right now, the planning algorithm in Prometheus is a little bit simple, and it only checks the time range and number of tombstones of each block. And uh, this information can be easily found from the metadata file. So I will not uh, dive deep into the planning algorithms here, but uh, ideally we can extend it, it to be more intelligent. And in tunnels, we have supported one uh, planner called index size limit planner to limit the maximum like index size of the compacted block. So yeah, I think that's all for the com compaction in Prometheus TSDB itself. Next, let's take a look at some like more large data scale scenarios in some system like Tunnels or Cortex. And uh, actually I will not cover Cortex compactor here because it's built on top of the Tunnels compactor with some like additional features. So a common like Tunnels uh, deployment looks like this. So we might have two clusters and each cluster has one Prometheus with one uh, Tunnel sidecar. And uh, in Prometheus, we will configure the cluster name as the external labels, and uh, the sidecar will try to inject the external labels to the TSDB blocks and upload them to the object storage every two hours. And besides, we also have one uh, central uh, tunnels compactor running against the object storage. And the uh, compactor works in four steps. And first, because compaction needs to do some planning first, and planning step only requires the block metadata. So the compactor will have a separate job to fetch the block metadata from the object storage and download them to a local disk. And after this is done, then it can start planning using this local metadata. And uh, the third step, if there's an available compaction plan, it will uh, try to download all these required blocks and compact them locally. And finally, it will try to upload the new block to the bucket and delete all these uh, source blocks. So uh, as you can see, you can find that stop, uh, step two and step three is exactly the same as the Prometheus uh, compactor. And the tunnels compactor just adds step one and four to get it working with the object storage uh, environment. And actually, uh, there's a little bit difference uh, in the planning phase. So planning is actually done separately in different groups, and each group is identified by the uh, ex external labels added to that block. So you can see here, we have uh, blocks from cluster Europe and US. So these blocks should be planned and compact together because we don't want to have uh, super larger blocks for maybe all the cluster go away. And uh, yeah, so finally we got two blocks for Europe and US. And uh, yeah, that's how uh, Tunnels Compactor works basically. And uh, next let's see some extensions we made to the Tunnels Compactor to deal with our like large scale data use cases. And uh, yeah, the first scenario is actually super common where we deploy two Prometheus instances at each cluster for high availability purposes. And in this case, a new external label called replica is added to identify the source 
uh, parameters of these uh, data blocks. And then the problem of this setup is actually the data duplication problem because of the grouping mechanism. And uh, the external labels for different replicas are actually different. So we will have two groups for two replicas, but actually they are still in the same cluster, right? So finally, we will have two compacted blocks like in this uh, cluster US with totally overlapped uh, time range for the two blocks. And obviously you can see this is not good because firstly, we double the space usage by having two blocks with almost the same data. And also during the query time, we have to do some online deduplication because also the query touch the two blocks. The query performance is not as good as like with only one block. So to solve this, actually, like as I mentioned, we can use the built-in uh, vertical compaction mechanism to merge the overlapped blocks, right? And tunnels provide a flag called the duplication replica label. And if we specify it, the replica label, uh, the replica external label can be ignored during the grouping and planning phase. And uh, all these uh, six blocks uh, will be planned and uh, compacted together. So yes, this is good because we utilize the default vertical compaction mechanism and use it to improve the space usage and the query performance. But the question is, is it really good enough? And uh, what about the trunks data? So actually the trunks data is still problematic because the trunks data are from uh, high availability Prometheus pairs and actually they cannot be perfectly deduplicated by the default vertical compaction mechanism because we have two Prometheus instances and they cannot actually uh, perfectly collect samples at exactly the same time. So the timestamp of these uh, samples from two Prometheus cannot be the same. However, the default vertical compaction only works for one-on-one -on -one deduplication, but in the case of different timestamp, it doesn't work. So finally, we still have double space usage for uh, like this replica data. So, and it would be better to have some like smarter vertical compaction algorithm to do this deduplication for this use case. And actually what we want is to have is to have something like this. We want to maybe only keep one sample from only one replica and that's already good enough to us. So this can be done by extending the like the duplication algorithm used in the vertical compaction. And in tunnels, we supported the same uh, penalty deduplication algorithm used by the tunnels querier, and we apply it for deduplication at the compactor side. So this saves the space usage a lot. And uh, another challenge we made uh, in tunnels is to how is about how to deal with some uh, data manu manipulation requests from the object storage. For example, we want to delete some high cardinality series, or we want to relabel these series, or rename these metrics. And the problem is that these blocks are from uh, object storage, and they are immutable by default. So can we modify the existing index and the trunks easily? So yeah, because today's topic is about compaction, and actually tunnels uses this compaction mechanism to achieve uh, this request. So let me use uh, relabeling for an uh, example. So we have this kind of relabeling configuration and what it does is that the first relabel request just uh, rename the, uh, this node CPU matrix to another name and another uh, relabel request just drop this label with the name code. So in this case, we are still trying to do a compaction for this for this block we want to modify. And uh, while we like iterate over all these series on the right hand side, we just uh, do this uh, relabeling uh, to this to each series label. And uh, if this series series label changes, then we can do some uh, actions accordingly. For example, in the case of label re uh, replace, it's super easy because we just need to 
uh, rename the labels on the right-hand side, so only index part need to be changed. We don't need to modify anything related to the trunks. But the label drop case is a little bit trickier because the code label, uh, once the code label is deleted, then these three series will be uh, merged into one series, right? So in this case, we need to also merge the corresponding trunks files and combine them and do some deduplication in this case. But anyway, finally, we uh, relabel this TCB block and uh, we got a new block after this compaction. So this is cool. So why not we have this support in Prometheus as well? So recently I opened a PR to support this kind of use case in the prompt tool. And actually the required change is super easy. So first I added one interface called modifier and it has only one uh, modify method. And this is just used to uh, apply some additional modification logic to the index files and to the trunks files during the compaction phase. And uh, for the Prometheus built-in write method, it's extended with a list of modifiers to apply this logic. And to view it more uh, easily, so this is the graph again with the modifier. So you can see the modifier just works as a metal layer uh, in the compaction process. And uh, during, the modif uh, during the compaction phase, we still need to merge the index files and the trunks together, but we apply the modification to them before writing a new block. So what can we achieve using this modifier? So let's do some brainstorming about downsampling. So you can simply think about downsampling as a process of increasing the script interval in Prometheus. And uh, in the diagram, you can see we downsample data from 15 seconds to one minute resolution. And after downsampling, we have fewer samples in this case. And uh, you can imagine in, in the case of downsampling, we just need to change the uh, trunks file and we don't need to modify anything related to the index. So actually we can implement a downsampling modifier and with the configuration on the left hand, high, left, left hand side, when we do the compaction, we find all the matched series with this matches label and uh, just rebuild these trunks with this configured resolution. And uh, yeah, the last uh, brainstorming case is about dynamic retention. We can also implement a retention modifier and during the compaction time, we can check whether these series uh, match the uh, required matches. And uh, for these match series, we move them to a new block and uh, keep them for a longer time. So yeah, I think that's all for today about my talk. So yeah, thank you for uh, everyone for listening and uh, I'm ready for the uh, Q&A part. Thank you. We're gonna have a slightly shorter Q&A for this session to catch up a little bit on time because we've run a little bit over. Does anybody have a question they'd like me to repeat for our virtual audience? All right, I, I have one then. Um, you mentioned the two dimensions of vertical and horizontal that you compact by. Um, I think I'm correct in saying horizontal is your time there and vertical is um, overlapping data, that sort of thing? Yeah, but actually, uh, I think vertical and horizontal is but in the graph, you can see when we try to merge the trunks together, it's just a still like horizontally merging, right? But the, if there's no uh, time overlapping, we don't need to do anything. We just chain these trunks together. But if there's any overlapping, we need to rebuild the trunk. So, yeah. I was going to ask, process. do you see any other dimensions that besides those two that you would mm, like to? Yeah, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I okay. think only, only the two dimensions. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.